Hello everybody and welcome to Tuesday with Luther. Last week we talked about the text John 1, 19 through 29, how John's testimony, his confession, his vocation is as the voice crying out in the wilderness. What does he cry out? Make straight the way of the Lord. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And the rest of his proclamation is that John 1, 29, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world as he points at Jesus. He preaches this to those sent from Jerusalem. He preaches this to his disciples. He preaches it to everyone that God, by the Holy, the Holy Spirit, has gathered to the Jordan River. So then we have the continuation of this, and I'll start again today at John 1, 29. The next day, he saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks before me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but for this purpose I came baptizing with water, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John bore witness. I saw the Spirit descend from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen him borne witness that this is the Son of God. So you have, you know, John reiterating again this is the one who comes after me which is silly to say right because john is older than jesus he's older than christ he's six months older right you know it said um when mary conceived jesus in the sixth month meaning the sixth month of elizabeth's pregnancy uh she came and saw him and that's when you have john the baptist leaping in the womb of saint elizabeth so you have him older so why does he say after you know who comes before me well, he's preaching the eternal nature of the Son of God. As we heard in the beginning of the gospel, the Word, you know, in the beginning was the Word. So he's saying, hey, this guy is not just, you know, some 30-year-old dude. He's not, he's just not my first cousin. This is God in the flesh, the incarnate Word, right here in the waters of the Jordan. <laughs> That's who he is. So John's proclaiming the eternal nature of the Son of God. He, he's not some created being. He is from all eternity, who was, is, and shall ever be, this one here. And how do I know that? It's not because John's really, really smart or came to this conclusion by himself. It was revealed to him by the Spirit. You know, he says that in there. I, I didn't know, meaning on my own, I wouldn't get it. I wouldn't understand it, but it's revealed to me. And it's the same with us today. Well, we wouldn't get who Jesus is by our own opinions, we can't convince somebody that Jesus is God, nor can we be convinced. It can only be given to us by revelation. And where does that revelation come? Well, it's not <laughs> when we hear that word revelation, we think, oh, I got to go, um, you know, into my backyard and sit underneath a tree and wait for God to speak to me. Or even sit in church and, you know, wait for that experience, that, that emotion to come over me where I just feel now that God speaks to me. No, <laughs> that's not how God works. Uh, that's an that's an immediate meaning he he speaks to you directly and most of us probably don't want that <laughs> God God comes to us uh, through means it's how he reveals his word how he reveals his will he speaks to us through the mouth of the pastor through the mouth of our neighbor and water bread and wine and that's where you see John where is he where is Jesus nature revealed is in his baptism and it's the same for you today. The, the nature of Jesus is revealed in your baptism. On the cross, Luther says this um, when he's meditating on John 1, 29. Jesus takes all of our sin. He says, your sin is now mine. He bears it. It's his sin. And now all of Christ's righteousness is yours. And where does that blessed exchange take place for you is in the waters of holy baptism. There, all of your sin, both original and actual sins, are made Christ's. And all of his righteousness is yours. You're baptized into a condition now, a relationship with the Father. He is now your Father. You can call upon him as such. Why? Because you are now united with Christ, like St. Paul talks about in Romans 6. That's who we are now. And, and that's the message. That's the preaching of the church. That you know the nature of Christ as it's revealed to you in the means of grace. Just as it was revealed to St. John the Baptist, so it's revealed to you. And what Jesus is revealed to you is not an exemplar Jesus or a what would Jesus do Jesus or a lawgiver Jesus. It's the Jesus of John 1.29. The atoning Jesus. The bearing sin Jesus. The fattened calf Jesus for you. That's the Jesus you get 
as John bears witness and as the church bears witness still today. Jesus for you, for your salvation. God bless you all. Next week, we're going to talk about Jesus calling the first disciples, which is always a fun time. We'll talk to you all soon.